Hi, my name is Sierra and I'm from the Department of the Environment. I'm here today to talk to you about simple actions you can do to improve your indoor air quality and the health of your home. We all deserve to live in healthy homes. And we all deserve to have healthy families. Many residents living in different neighborhoods of San Francisco deal with poor air quality, which contributes to asthma. There are many reasons for high rates of asthma. Some of those reasons we have control over and some of those reasons we do not have control. We cannot control outdoor sources of air pollution from city traffic on streets and freeways. We also cannot control air pollution from industrial sources. Our home is a place where we can control um, what we do to make ourselves healthier. Did you know that the average person spends 90% of their time indoors? Or that concentrations of some pollutants indoors can be two to five times higher than typical outdoor concentrations? Today, we are going to talk about indoor air pollution and specific things we can do to make our homes healthier. What do you think are some sources of indoor air pollution? Let's talk about indoor air pollutants that can be identified in our homes. One source of indoor air pollution is dust mites. Dust mites are tiny bugs that can't be seen with our eyes. They eat our dust and thrive in moist conditions like our San Francisco fog. Some of us also deal with mold, which can grow inside our homes and pollute our air. Some molds can be very dangerous and cause serious health problems if not removed right away. Roaches, ants, and rodents, just to name a few, are some of the pests we have to deal with. It's not just that these pests are annoying, their droppings and the body parts of dead pests can become part of the dust we breathe. Many of the products that we, are, that we use are also harmful to us. When we use products such as hairsprays and oven sprays, these aerosols can create a fine mist of, of toxic chemicals that directly pollute our indoor air. These, the sprayed chemicals go straight into our lungs and we breathe them in. Bug sprays contain tiny mist of pesticides that can be breathed in when used in the house. Did you know, do you use bleach or ammonia or both to clean your house? Household cleaners such as bleach and ammonia are some of the products that many of us use to clean our homes. But these are not healthy products and can be avoided. And whenever you do, do not mix bleach and ammonia together as it creates a poisonous gas. When I was growing up and living in my parents' house, I associated the smell of lemon and pine forest scented cleaners with clean lemons. Well, I was mistaken. Those smells we often associate with a clean home come from chemicals that are added to these products. Products that we use to make our home smell nicer often contain combinations of numerous harsh chemicals to produce a familiar smell. If you see the word fragrance or if there are health warnings like caution on the label, then chances are products contain chemicals that are not healthy for you. Without proper ventilation, the fumes from cooking on your stove are another source of indoor air pollution.
dust mites, mold, pests, aerosol sprays, and toxic household products can trigger asthma symptoms in people who have asthma. In some cases, these triggers can cause asthma in people who never experienced asthma before. Here are some symptoms that can occur as a result of exposure to the indoor air pollutants I just mentioned. You can start coughing or have watery eyes. You could suddenly find that it's hard to breathe or you might make wheezing sounds. And you can even feel nauseous while you might not feel all of these symptoms at once. Just experiencing any one of, the, one of them shows why it's so important to improve your indoor air quality. Daily exposure to indoor air pollutants over the many months or years may result in serious health effects such as respiratory and heart disease. That's why it's so important to improve your indoor air quality to help protect your health and the health of your family. The good news is that I'm going to share simple actions you can start doing today that can make a big difference in improving your home's indoor air quality. First, keep your home dry. Mold grows in moist places. Make sure to dry out or wipe down moist areas in your house. Remind yourself to open the windows and circulate fresh air into your home. Taking this simple action can also help to dry out your home. Remove piles of clutter. Although this is an extreme example, pests like mice and cockroaches love nesting in clutter, including clean paper and clean boxes. The next thing you can do is to, is to regularly clean your homes and counters. Sweep up crumbs and wipe up grease so that they don't attract pests. Go fragrance free whenever possible. Remember, strong sits can trigger asthma or cause physical reactions. And finally, avoid using cleaners that contain ammonia, bleach, or strong fragrances. The good news is that there are safer products and alternatives to keep your home clean and healthy. For example, here's a lemon. Did you know that the natural lemon juices give your home a fresh smell without man-made chemicals? It also cuts grease. Use a microfiber cloth when dusting or mopping or wiping counters. These cloths are reusable and are dust and dirt magnets. They cut down the need for chemicals when cleaning. For example, Instead of using a window cleaner, you can simply wipe a mirror or window with water and a microfiber cloth. Use baking soda can serve as a sink cleaner, a deodorizer with a brush and some elbow grease. It can also remove soap scum. Did you know that dish soap can be used for more than just washing dishes. Plain soap and scented, plain unscented soap and water is often the safest and best cleaning solution. Buy unscented dish soap instead of scented soap. A solution of soap and warm water can be used for all sorts of things, such as cleaning live ants and cockroaches on contact, removing mold on hard surfaces, and killing germs. Some soap and, soap and water can be our best friends for killing germs. Remember, when you remove the dirt, you remove the germs, you remove the germs that stick to the dirt. So in most cases, 
You don't need bleach or other expensive disinfectants in your home. If you really feel the need to use a disinfectant, try to choose a product with hydrogen peroxide. Don't be a victim of greenwashing. Greenwashing is a marketing strategy some companies use to convince customers that their products are green or natural. They even may color their products green to make it seem safe or, and environmentally friendly. But sometimes they're not. How can you tell? It's not easy. Look at the label. The most common words on toxic consumer products are caution, danger, poison, and warning. Look for labels and sources you can trust. We like Safer Choice and EWG verified labels. The Safer Choice label shows that the product meets the US EPA's safer product standard. The EWG verified label for personal care and home cleaning products means that the product meets the environmental working group's strict standards and contains none of the EWG's chemicals of concern. Pests are also a significant source of air pollution and contribute to asthma. Here's what to avoid. Do not use aerosol sprays or indoor foggers. Sprays are commonly used for ants and roaches. Foggers are commonly used for fleas and ticks. These products spray a fine mist of toxic pesticides into the air throughout your home and will go into your lungs and settle on your furniture and belongings. These products may seem to kill your bugs, but they only kill the pests you can see and not the ones that are hidden. They are not very effective at solving pest problems. Don't use rat or mouse baits. They are poison pellets which can kill or sicken kids, pests, and wildlife too. Insecticidal chalk is an illegal type of pesticide. It can be harmful to children who mistake it for drawing chalk and pets and wildlife who may eat it unintentionally. So how can we control pests without using poisonous chemicals? The most important step is prevention. Remember the four takeaways. Every pest needs these four things, food, water, shelter, and entry. All pests need food. And if there's any in your house that they can get to, they will. Do not let crumbs on your floor or in your pantry be their next meal. Store all food in still containers. This includes dry food like cereal and crackers. Pests love to find food in open trash cans or bags. Make sure to take out the trash, recycling, compost from inside your home and to your bins outside on a regular basis. Flies are attracted to food scraps and their eggs can hatch in as little as three days. Get food scraps out of your house and on, on a regular basis. All pests need water, so make sure your house is dry. Check for condensation behind appliances like refrigerators and fix any leaks. Are pests able to walk through the door of your home? Attach a door sweep. A sweep eliminates gaps under the door that pests use to crawl into your home. Pests can come into your home however they can. You may see signs like this. In this case, an outlet cover will help. Check for any holes, cracks, or entry points where a pest can enter your home so you can block them out. Seal all cracks with the sealant. Even the smallest openings can serve as doorways for ants and roaches. Here, we can see some space where this sink 
pipe passes through a wall. Though it looks small to us, it's big enough for mice, roaches, and ants to crawl through and enter your home. Close up these types of gaps with steel ring that fits around the pipe. Ask your hardware store for an escutcheon plate. So you've done your best to prevent pests from coming into your home, but what do you do if the pests are already inside? A classic method for catching mice is the mouse trap. Set up these carefully and place them flush against the wall where mice like to crawl. Keep the traps away from children and pets. If you have a fly problem, use the old fashioned fly swatter. This is an inexpensive method that doesn't use chemicals. You can also put fly tape. It's sticky and flies can't escape. Just remember that these tools won't solve a fly problem. You need to find the fly's food source and get rid of it. Use safer pesticides as a last resort. Use ant and roach baits as they are both safer and more effective to kill ants and roaches. These insects are attracted to the bait, eat the poison, and pass and survive long enough to pass the poison to their colony. After an insect dies from the bait, live insects feed on the dead one and get poisoned as well. These baits are safer because they, are, they use a low dose of pesticides and can be placed in hidden spots in the home, not easily accessed by pets and children. Now, we've talked about safer cleaning and pest control. Let's talk about what you can do with old toxic household products that you may want to get rid of. These items don't belong in any of our collection bins. You can, you can make an appointment to have toxic products from your home picked up by Recology's Home Collection Program by calling 415-330-1405. Every resident is entitled to two free pickups per year, or you can drive up to 15 gallons of toxic products per trip to Recology's Household Hazardous Waste Facility for free disposal. The facility is located at 501 Tunnel Ave Avenue, but it's only open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you need to bring proof that you are a San Francisco resident. You can use your driver's license, a utility bill, or your property tax. Now that you've learned simple actions you can take to help reduce indoor air pollution while keeping your home clean and healthy, we need your help. Share what you've learned with other people in your neighborhood. Because we all deserve to live in healthy homes. And we all deserve to have healthy families. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please be sure to call 415-335-3757 or email at sierra.pringle Sierra at sfgov.org.